There is a serious crisis going on in Syria. Thousands of people are being killed and others evacuated from their homes with no food, water, or shelter. Many among those struggling are children. More than 500,000 people have been killed in Syria since 2011. Innocent people have had their lives taken away from their own president, Bashar al-Assad. I spoke with Rachel Stone from Questcope in Minneapolis to get more information. So Questcope uh, has been around for about 30 years and we are a youth-oriented organization. So we work with um, youth who are marginalized, who likely otherwise wouldn't be developed or paid attention to, and we help develop their um, their skills and their capabilities and their um, like emotional health um, to help them be change agents for both themselves and for others. So we officially merged with ARC in 2015. So we are a subsidiary of theirs. Um, we maintain our own board and our own staff um, and have the autonomy to continue operating as um, an individual organization, but we are in the American Refugee Family as a subsidiary. So I am the communications officer. So I oversee how we communicate about ourselves across all of our channels. Um, so how we talk about our work, what our tone is, what our messaging is, um, and I also do the bulk of our writing as well. So within Syria, we serve uh, about one million people, and since they're within Syria, they're, uh, they're IDPs, so they're internally displaced persons. I got connected to Dr. Kurt Rhodes kind of through the grapevine, and just really connected to Questcope's um, focus on what international aid should be. and. This is why I got connected to American Refugee Committee as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the values that they share is that um, like we really need to take a look at the international model of doing humanitarian aid, which is really quite a broken system right now. Mm -hmm. um, and the one thing that I really respected about Questcope was that they believed that um, the people who were here to serve should be equal partners, not just passive recipients. And over the past three years, like I have learned so much from the refugees that we work alongside and they have, I think, more to teach us than we have to teach them. And Questcope and ARC really sees them as an equal partner in all of this. I think that the conflict in Syria is so, so deeply fractured and complicated at this point. I think that if you look at civil wars of the past, typically a true civil war is people fighting within the same country. There might be two or more sides, but there aren't people from the outside feeding into it. And so eventually the people who are fighting either run out of money, they run out of people because people are dying, or they just don't, they get tired of fighting because it's their country, it's their you know, friends and neighbors and brothers and sisters that they're losing. And people do just usually eventually run out of money. And I think what we're seeing in Syria is a true proxy war in which, um, you know, many people we talk to in Syria are tired of fighting. They're not exactly happy with whatever the outcome might be, but they're ready to find a solution. But because there's so many world powers feeding into the war, they have a stake in another country's civil war, I think we might not see the end for quite a while. I do believe there's hope for Syria, and I, for no other reason than I have met so many of, because I travel back and forth to Jordan about two, three times a year. Uh, I've never been to Syria, and I likely won't be for many years. Um, but when I meet our, like the Syrian youth who run our youth center, and I, I, I mean, when you start to realize and hear and understand everything they have been through, um, I mean, it's truly horrifying and that they're able to come out on the other side and um, 
they still have hope for their country and for their ability to move beyond this and rebuild. Um, so one of the reasons that Quesco is uh, a youth-centered organization and one of the reasons that we believe so strongly in youth is that our founder, Dr. Kurt Rhodes, um, won Social Entrepreneur of the Year um, through the Schwab Foundation in 2011. And Klaus Schwab, who um, created the award um, and is also one of Questcope's mentors, um, he talks about how, so he was a young German boy uh, right after the end of World War II. And one of his key beliefs or things that he noticed was that the way that Europe was able to rebuild after World War II was because he noticed that it was youth coming together, like young Germans, Italians, um, you know, French, British kids, um, basically coming together and starting anew. And it was something that, you know, maybe their parents or grandparents just couldn't do because there was too much memory or too much experience of what had happened. Um, I'm not quite sure, but um, that is one thing that is deeply resonant with Klaus Schwab and certainly deeply resonant with us um, and why we invest so much and have so much belief in the potential of youth and particularly youth who um, are typically left out of the process. So we have, um, so yeah, so one of the things that I know is so important to um, our Syrian teammates and the Syrian refugees that we work alongside is that they always like continually implore us, like just please don't forget us. We have one woman um, who works on our Syria team and she does massive logistics across the country for um, food, water, medicine. And she said recently, she's like for every wheelchair I deliver, every water truck I set up, every, um, you know, shelter we build walls in. She's like, I'm just so thankful that people in the West haven't forgotten us. Um, so a lot of it is doing just what you're doing, keeping the conversation going. Um, I think connection is really important and I know this gets tough across barriers of language and time and space, but um, we have more tools than ever at our disposal right now to keep um, you know, a Syrian high school or connected with a high school in Minnesota, and I think exploring those ways to um, lessen the divide or the otherness between people that seems to exist right now is so, so critical. So I think that's just a big part of it, keeping the conversation going, um, learning more, reading as much as you can, like it's such a complicated crisis, um, you know, donating your time and money, like all of that, like when everyone can just do a little bit, because I know the problem seems so overwhelming, um, but when everyone does a little bit, like it really does add up to a huge impact. After speaking to Rachel, I learned that there are many people reaching out to help the Syrian refugees and that it only takes something small to get involved. I completed my call to action by doing research, reaching out to someone, starting a conversation, and hopefully encouraging more conversation. Bringing up an issue is the first step towards a solution. Thank you.